I wanted to talk a little bit about my uh, story of coming to faith in Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior, uh, the King, the Rescuer, the Restorer, the Redeemer. So I, um, I wanted to share this verse with you. This is from Matthew, uh, the Gospel according to Matthew. It's found in the Bible. It's the uh, first, uh, first Gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament. And it's found in chapter 3, verse 19. And it says, And he said to them, this is Jesus speaking, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So Jesus says, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And I think this is really my story, is uh, Jesus a long time ago was uh, reaching out to me and saying, follow me. So how did that happen? Well, when I was a kid, I, I grew up in a home, but it wasn't, it wasn't a Christian home. Um, when I think of a Christian home, I think of a, a family who's, um, or parents who are dedicated to following Jesus, to loving him and teaching their kids how to follow Jesus and how not only Jesus' teachings, but what Jesus accomplished through the cross and his resurrection and ascension, how that impacts everyday life. So I did not grow up in a Christian home, but I did, however, um, my parents did take me to church. Um, when I was young, my father stopped going to church at a very young age, and he sort of renounced, renounced his faith. Uh, but my mom was nurturing, uh, caring, would even share uh, stories with us. We, she would take us on picnics. And kind of look at you know look at the nature around us and, and talk about God, and also attending church, um, I got Bible stories. And back in those days, we used flannel boards. I don't know if you remember that or not. And while I don't think um, the church I grew up in was perfect by any means, I think a lot of the teaching was very moralistic, uh, which I can talk more about later. However, it laid this framework in my mind that I think set me up uh, to later to to follow Jesus. Um, and I think God used my mom, used my church to sort of start calling out to me and to say, follow me, follow me. Um, also, God used nature. Um, I grew up on this farm and I had to sometimes do my chores at night. And so I'd go over to the barn and it was, I don't know, maybe 200 meters from my house to the barn, something like quite, quite a distance for a, for a little boy. And I'd be walking out um, over to the barn and I'd be looking up in the night sky, seeing the stars shine down, seeing the, the shadowy trees. And I was filled with a sense of not just, wow, this is beautiful, all that was part of it, but a sense of awe and even a little bit of fear. And in my child brain, I connected what my mom and my church was teaching me and that this is God. God has created this and it's beautiful and it's overwhelming. And so I think um, very much like St. Patrick, I think I started experiencing, nat experiencing natural revelation where God was speaking to me, reaching out to me through observing the natural created order. It's beauty, it's majesty, it's, it's danger. Um, I started experiencing God in that way. Um, but, you know, we didn't grow up reading the Bible. We did pray at meals. Uh, but again, I had this framework in my head of these, of these Bible stories. Which, which would play a part in my journey uh, later on. Well, anyways, in my church, there's sort of a, a culture of that when you're around the age of 12, you, um, you know, people ask you, you, know, you do, do you want to follow Jesus? And what was amazing is I really did want to follow Jesus. Um, and I actually you know, went through a class and learned about how I was separated from God um, and I needed to, to trust in Jesus to, to, so I wouldn't be separated any longer. And I simply, through childlike faith, I, I believed it. And I think if I'm totally honest, honest, there was a little part of me, I'm a people pleaser, and I knew that's what people in my church did um, to, be, um, to, to make sure that you were accepted. And I wanted to please people as well. So there was this little bit of peace in me where I, yeah, I wanted to, to make my, my mom happy. I wanted to make my church community happy. happy. But, but at that age, I, I did believe that, that Jesus rescued, rescued me and rescues sinners. So I said yes to following Jesus, and I was baptized. Um, I was dunked in water to, to show the world that I now follow Jesus. But God was just starting to do his, his deep and, and amazing work. And again, like it says in Matthew, it says, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So I decided to follow Jesus, but then he started to make me. He started to make me new. So, so what happened? Well, in the, the church I grew up in, there was not a culture of, 
of testimony, of sharing um, how Jesus was impacting your life, how he had impacted you, how he was impacting you, impacting you, and how he was changing you for, for even for the future. But around this time, I, um, I had a friend named Daniel who just started, he always was just talking about God, always talking about Jesus. And I was just struck by how in this, his life and in his family's life, prayer, studying the Bible, was just a normal part of everyday life, talking about what God was doing, praying to God um, for, for forgiveness, to, for health and healing, for, for a number of, a variety of reasons. I was just struck by how, yeah, just what, what a part of it, a normal part of his life this was. And it was around this time, maybe a little before, that I, I was starting to be drawn into to wanting to think about things more deeply. I remember having a conversation with a, another friend of mine about the Loch Ness Monster, um, but just you know, thinking about um, things I hadn't thought about before and thinking very deeply. And so my friend Daniel started getting me to think deeply about who God is, what, what God had accomplished, and what, what God wanted for my life. So I started attending um, this, uh, this youth group gathering with him and uh, some older teenagers, and I started hearing teenagers share their testimony about God rescuing them from sin. And not just sin in this vague sense, but saying, this is what I struggle with. This is the situation I was in. And Jesus rescued me. He changed my heart. He changed my life. And again, I was not familiar with that culture. And it's like, man, I wanted that. And I wanted that freedom and that depth of relationship. So I started attending with him more regularly. And uh, the pastor of their church was another another a man who I've gotten to know uh, fairly well over the years. Um, we got reconnected, you know, fairly recently. But is this, this pastor, and he he started asking me um, questions about that, about my faith, and I, I, I recommitted my my life to Jesus because there was this this sin, this brokenness in my life that I don't think I had dealt with. Um, so what did that brokenness uh, look like? I don't know if I could have perfectly articulated at that time, but looking backwards, I was a kid who who really struggled with trying to please everyone around me. Getting the honor and the praise of everyone around me was the most important thing. I was someone who really struggled with with lust, um, having this this not right view of women and wanting to 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 use women to to satisfy my own my own sexual desires. Um, what else did that brokenness look like? Well, I was someone who I was selfish, um, someone who did not love his family well, someone who I would hide things. Um, Someone who would eventually, I would lead kind of a double life, you know, into high school, into college, leading this double life. And I, I kind of sensed all these things as a kid, although I don't think, like I said, I, I could have articulated it, but I wanted Jesus to get in there and rescue me from that. And so I said, I said yes to following Jesus again. Jesus was making me. And, and when I, you know, I, at that time that a lot of churches would pray the sinner's prayer and I had never said a prayer like that before. So in this moment, I really was surrendering my heart, surrendering my life to Jesus and saying, Jesus, clean me, make me new, deal with this brokenness, deal with this sin in my life. And then the, the other aspect is I grew up in, in a home that was abusive. Um, I, I won't go into the details of that, but things were, things were not okay in our house. And so there was all this, also this piece of brokenness where I needed healing in my life. And so I surrendered my life, life to Jesus in that, in that moment as well. So fast forwarding through high school and college, although I was a Christian following Jesus, I didn't really have anyone in my life, um, especially I moved uh, when I was 16 to Rhode Island, and I really didn't have anyone in my life who was helping me to follow Jesus, pointing me towards him. And and I temptations, lust, things got, you know, things got the better of me. And um, I started living a double life where I would I would hide kind of these these deep dark sins that I didn't want no I didn't want anyone to know about it. And in college, this this progressed into I really got sick of people being fake. And so anyone around me who was you know smiling and happy, I was just like ah they're being fake. And really I started seeing the world through that lens because that's what I was doing. I was being a fake person, and I so badly um, wanted wanted God to deal with this. I just didn't know what to do. But God started putting people in my life to help point me to Him people in my life through who started teaching me the Bible. And I started reading and studying the Bible. And I've got a lot more stories to share about that. I won't share them all right now. Um, and it was through this group called the InterVarsity Christian Fellowship at, at Colby College, Colby Christian Fellowship. And I was so thankful for all the men and women um, in that group to this day 
who radically changed my life. They helped me to see God's tangible, God's love became tangible to me through this community who loved me, forgave me, pointed me to Jesus, helped me study scripture. And God just started, he again started making me new, started changing my desires. I started desiring, wanting to worship God, to praise him, to know him on a deeper and deeper level. And, and then there was something huge and amazing that happened in colleges. God started healing these areas of brokenness of from being a kid who was beat up and abused um, and trying to figure that out and starting to see these kind of bad trajectories in my life, saying, God, I don't, I don't want to be like those bad people in my past, but I want to be the person you want me to become, Jesus. So so rescue me and make me, make me new. And was able to start confessing sin out loud to people, talking about my 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 dark temptations towards pornography and uh, you know looking at women in wrong ways. I was able to confess those things and be forgiven and to start experience healing. Oh my gosh! I was you know Jesus was doing some really supernatural things. Um, but look at this last part in the verse. It says, "I will make you fishers of men." So what God was doing and preparing me this whole time is He was making me into someone who was going to start not only worshiping Him and giving Him glory but someone who's going to start going out and telling other people about Jesus. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is I want I want you to know about Jesus, his goodness, his kindness, his mercy towards you. And so God started making me someone who wanted to not only be changed by him, but wanted to start telling other people about him and surrendering my life to that call and that mission and that purpose to say, look what Jesus has done for you. And yes, you're in sin. God hates sin. You deserve God's wrath and justice poured out against you. But Jesus has taken on the wrath of God. Jesus has died on the cross to forgive you. So receive his grace. It's there waiting for you. And so I started uh, doing that. Not just like once, (laughs) you know, a while, but wanting to make my life about that. Every second of my life about that. So wanting to have conversations with people, engaging people, serving people, loving people. And I eventually ended up joining staff with InterVarsity Christian Fellowship and started working at a college campus to help students follow Jesus. Um, Just like I I didn't have anyone when I was in high school and when I was younger to really help develop me as a Christian, I wanted to become that person for other young Christians and then for other people who didn't know Christ and to start telling them the good news of Jesus. And then fast forward, I'm, I'm married, I've got three kids now. And Leah and I, my wife, we would say our lives, every moment of our life is about serving and loving Christ and wanting to tell everyone around us about Jesus. But what do I mean by telling people? Well, it means forming deep friendships, listening to them, and finding about how the gospel fits into their life and how Jesus is calling out to them right now to to rescue them. So that's just a little bit about my story. And if you're someone who's listening to this video and you don't know Jesus, I would I would compel you, encourage you to read the Gospels or or call me or email me so we can talk together about Jesus. And there's all kinds of things we can talk about, the the historical reliability of the Gospels, um, how how the Bible stacks up against other ancient documents, uh, what's in the Bible is unprecedented, how God um, uses Scripture to to reach out to people to convince them that He's true, that He's trustworthy, and that Jesus has, has made a way to them. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. But it's it's the most wonderful thing in the world to, to follow Jesus. So again, that passage from Matthew was, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. And that's what Jesus has done in my life. He called out to me, I followed him. Jesus is making me new. He's, make, he's made me white as snow. And he continues to change the desires of my heart more for him to love him and to love people. And he's making me a fisher of men, someone who who wants to be on God's mission and part of God's purpose. And he wants to do the same thing for you. All right, I'm Patrick again. And this is uh, this is my story of coming to faith in Jesus. A little bit of my story. There's a lot more. Take care.